Sister Tabitha and Sister Tammy after that. Try 
Sisters, if you would come on. And how about Sister Becky Jensen after that? I will 
he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy has filled my soul. For I know something happened. And now I know he touched me and he made me. Thank you, sisters, for that. All right, Sister Becky. Then how about the gospel ears after that? of a song the other day. I'm not going to sing it, but I was thinking of that song they used to sing, sing, Step Into the Water. And I know we have to make that step. I'm talking to myself. Got to make that step to get those blessings and to walk further with the Lord. And that's what I want. That's my desire. I travel back in my mind today and saw the things the Lord has done for me. He paid the debt that I should have paid. Oh, He saved my soul with His sweet grace. And I'm so thankful that He took my place. Oh, Shine in me. 
that sister all right if the gospel ears would come on Just 
And it's it's been 13 years since he brought me out of that truck. He didn't have to do it. And I didn't think he would. I had already given up. He hadn't. And I just want to, I want to be thankful for, for him because you can't forget the things he's done for you. You won't realize everything he's done for you because he does it daily. But there are things that you just can't forget. I remember that. And I remember in 2009 when he brought me out of the hospital when very few people thought I would come out. But he was always there, and I thank him. Thank you for that testimony, and thank you all for the song, and thank you each one of you for the songs that you've sang this morning. I look forward to what the Lord has for us this morning I always do and I know he has something for all of his children from his precious word so I'll turn the service over to Brother Allen at this time Again, there's six dollars left back here in this corner last Sunday, and it's not mine. So I'll give anybody the opportunity if a young person or whoever it's up here on the platform, so you get it if it's yours. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you. Grateful to you that you remember us. Grateful for the blessings you blessed us with and for the brothers and sisters that you've given to us for this hour that we're living in, that we may, Lord, not struggle, but move as the Spirit moves in this hour, looking for that perfection that you promised in your word. That true perfection, Lord, that Revelation 19 speaks about, as well as Revelation chapter 8. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon us and your kindness unto us. And for the day and time and hour that you've given us to live in. Because it's the most blessed hour that man has ever experienced. So we thank you, Father, that you have brought us into this time and given us this opportunity. And that, Lord, you have 
led us in your righteous path. Forgive us of our shortcomings, of our errors, and walk with us, Lord, in this hour to, as we seek perfection, as we seek to walk on with you. May you bless now your people, Lord, as I stand here, that I may have words of encouragement for them, that as we go along, then things may become more clear and more evident unto each one of us. Thank you for these things now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Bud. Well, it's good to be here again today and to see each one of you here. Just praise the Lord for you. And for, for what this you mean to me as well as to the body of Christ, that he is called in this hour to be his saints. Some have said, uh, well... You can't call yourself saints. Paul called the people in his day saints. That's the sanctified ones. And as we look to him, we think we're thankful that we can say that we're in that group. It's been reading some in the book of Acts uh, this week and. It's a blessing to see what God done in the lives of those people in that hour. When, when a man like Stephen stood for truth and the religious world killed him. But he died in victory. He died looking up to see Jesus standing, waiting on me. I remember Brother Jackson saying that's the only time that you ever see Jesus standing is when that you uh, see him standing, welcoming Stephen home. Otherwise, he's seated there to make intercession. But one of his faithful servants went home to be with him. You say, well, I don't understand that, that he went home. His body was here, but his spirit was with the Lord. They're in paradise. So, it's goodbye here, but it's hello there. So, uh, we, we find that whenever the time come for Paul to leave this world, he welcomed what was coming to him because he said before that for me to live is for your sakes, but for me to die is gain. So he realized what was on the other side. We are seeing those things today as we walk along in this journey to know that God is the ever-present help in the time of need. And don't forget that. No matter what your need may be, He is there to supply that need. It may not come with ribbons on it, but it will come. Because many times we overlook what God is doing for us because we're looking for the ribbons that uh, that 
we never see that sometimes the blessings of God is tied up in shrewd packages. Thank you, Brother Bud. Sometimes it's instead of in the beautiful wrapping paper, it's in a brown paper bag that's been tied up and when you open it that's what you're looking for instead of looking at the paper on the outside you're looking for what is inside the package God never disappoints his children because Through trials, He goes with us. Through tests, He's there. And He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's sometimes the hardest thing for us to see is that He's with us in the hard time, but He is. You never know what it would have been without Him. But with Him, I was just thinking of my subject that I've been on, thinking his brother Jim was singing that song this morning, A Crown of Life Awaits Beyond the Grave. And that is your crown. Instead of a crown with great rubies and diamonds and things of that nature, it's going to be a crown of life, of which is much better. We have more waiting on us than what we can put on our head. And uh, the crown that we look for is one that does not fade or tarnish, and it don't need to be put in some kind of a solution every once in a while. To bring the shine out of it. Because it will shine. Because I read in the scripture where that there's neither, there's no night there. And so, you say, well, how will we sleep? Don't worry about that. (laughs) There's going to be enough to stay awake for. For an eternity. We thank the Lord today for His mercy that He's shown us. His grace that He's shown upon us. There was something that I read last week that kind of disturb someone in the 12th chapter of the book of Daniel. Didn't disturb them that it was wrong, but it disturbed them because they didn't feel that they had uh, were fulfilling that part of it. I know I read down through there from uh, the fourth verse through the tenth verse. But I want to go down a little further and start today and just kind of to ease your mind about yourself. The eighth verse, Daniel said, I heard, but I understood not. See, he didn't understand everything he was hearing. And some people 
sometimes get disturbed when they don't understand everything. And they think that they're not measuring up to Scripture because they don't understand everything that they hear. But even Daniel here, because it wasn't time. But he said we would understand here in the end time. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He is disturbed. He's made to wonder because he don't know what time or when this is going to happen. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. See, he still don't give him no answer. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Now we're at the time of the end and we understand what he was talking about. But everybody is not going to understand at the same time. That is a that is something that comes by revelation and the revelation to certain things is Brother Bud was talking here Thursday night when he's talking about the third day. It's not that you reject it, but it's not but it's that you don't understand right then. But it will be given you to understand. If you walk on to know the Lord, you will understand what He's talking about. Many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly. And not none of the wicked shall understand. But the, but the wise shall understand. Now, I got a telephone call that this was, it really disturbed a certain sister. Sister, don't worry about it. Because she began to wonder because she didn't understand everything if she was one of the wicked. Don't never let the devil tell you these things. Just because that you don't understand at the time. Or that you don't understand fully. Or that you can't explain it. Some people, unless they were put under pressure, will never be able to explain it. But if they are ever put under the pressure, then the Holy Ghost will answer for them. We have a, a scriptural indication of that. Maybe I could use another word than that, but we do have Scripture to prove that. That the Bible tells us not always to prepare answers for everything. Because whenever we do, then we cut the Holy Ghost out of being able to answer what we're looking for. So, if you're concerned about this message, you'll understand it sooner or later. I just wanna, wanted to give encouragement to that person today and to anyone else that maybe things bother you because you don't fully understand everything. Because there is that Thirty, sixty, and hundredfold Christian. 
That don't mean that you're less Christian if you're thirtyfold than you are a hundredfold. It just means that uh, you you can't explain everything. You believe it, but you can't explain it. Because you're trusting that there's a ministry that's going to tell you the truth. And that you're going to be stirred in the right direction. Instead of a wrong direction. So, just go on and serve the Lord and and don't let the devil worry you about things that you don't understand this morning even. Now, I know I've spent a lot of time on Revelation 8 and Revelation 10, but I'm going to go back there this morning because I feel that there's a further explanation of this to make it more clear. There's a reason that the Scripture is written like it is. It's written for our learning, but it's written like it is for to, sh- to show it to us. But not to show it to the world because the Bible said none of the wicked shall understand. None. Not one. Whenever the Seven thunders utter they will not understand. I don't care how long they've been in the Bible. I don't care how long they have studied. But God leads us in a certain path and each step that we take takes us a little bit higher in the revelation of the Scriptures. And if we stop somewhere because we're under the age of the flying eagle and the age of the flying eagle has not stopped. The revelation is not over and the revelation of seven thunders won't just all of a sudden come before other things are revealed. Because it is a a gradual revelation that takes time. Because it talks about the end time. Not the end, but the end time. And as he talks there in that scripture, it says none of the wicked shall understand. So there's an understanding process. Because it said the wise shall understand and that's not talking about one subject that's talking about God's revelation to build us up till the time of the thunders so we go back to the 8th chapter which I've read and gone over And when he had opened the seventh seal, when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half of a half an hour. So the seal of which that I have the seal a seal up there the seals six of them have been opened to our understanding the sixth seal is not finished neither is the fourth seal finished 
Here is seals that has helped this all these years from the very beginning of when that John was it was revealed to John. And we see that it's in the right hand of him. But here is the only seal that is holding. This one right here, the rest of them have been peeled back. And each one of them had a message in it. This one will also have a message in it. When that, when that seventh seal is open, you have, uh, you have a half an hour of silence after this is open. Do you understand that? You've still got time. I may, I don't mean time to get right, but you've got time here before the bride is taken away. So, when that is, when that is open, then we find Something else is going on here in this 8th chapter. Because when this seal is open, then you have your angels. Your seven trumpet angels preparing themselves to sound. That's when they come on stage. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Uh, the trumpets lay in conjunction with the seventh seal. What I mean by that is all of this is getting ready to happen at the same time. If you believe the 11th chapter, which is the two prophets that have come on the scene, and the two prophets come on the scene at the time of the revelation of the man of sin when he is revealed. These all happen in the same era, era of time. But here's another thing. They have, they, they have not sounded yet. But they are on the scene. And another angel came and stood at the altar. This is when the seventh seal is open. Because look who it's for. The saints of God is still on the earth. It's how we read the Scripture is what gives us the understanding of it. I'm not trying to make something up here. I'm just trying to read the Scripture and see how it pans out in this end time. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense. Much incense. I like that. Because there's something going to happen with this incense.
This was a type of what happened in the Old Testament with the with your high priest. Because the smoke of the altar. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which is before the throne. See, this is tying heaven and earth. The bride is still here. But the incense is ascending to heaven. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints. You're not going to be praying when you get in heaven. You're going to be in the presence of Him that you prayed to on earth. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Something happened here as the bride was praying. Because her prayer is going up before God. She is in tune with her Creator. And then in the sixth verse, goes along with the second verse, but it don't happen till this has come about. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now we know that four of these trumpets belong to the Two prophets. Because it is what goes with the prophet's message. As you read over there, that fire comes out of their mouth and devours their enemy. They are not spitting fire, but it's judgment that comes out of their mouth. And this is all intertwined at the same time. Now we go on from there to the tenth chapter. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was up on his head. We go back to our angel of Revelation 10. This is now open in his hand. His right hand is he is swearing to heaven the time should no longer delay. Other words, There's not going to be any more lull in what God is doing like you may think it is now. 
because the things that happen from here is going to be evident daily of what that God is doing after the seal is open. And he's standing here with one foot, his right foot up on the sea and his left up on the earth. And a rainbow was about his head and his face were as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. See, the eighth chapter, when he had opened the seventh seal, here he stands with it open. That's during that half an hour of silence, this whole chapter 10 is during that half hour of silence except for the seventh verse. We're going to know from there on, we're going to know what to do. And whenever this angel with this censer in his hand and all that happens here on earth, whenever this fire is cast down to earth, There is going to be happenings from their own with the saints of God. And he said his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. The seventh seal is is now open, and then the voices of the seven thunders sound after it is open. All the attention of heaven is given to earth. That's the reason that there's silence in heaven. See, also, he made this cry. There is a shout. There is a cry. And whenever he does this, then seven thunders utter their voices. There's something in the cry, in the shout there. He cried with a loud voice. The seal is is open in the eighth chapter. There's nobody else to be saved. That ends redemption to the Gentile people. We know that there's Jews that is going to come in. The hundred and forty four thousand is going to be sealed with the Father's seal upon their forehead, with the Holy Ghost. Because they have a message for this earth. 
And the woman of Revelation 12, she's going to be told where to go. That's all in the message of the two prophets. There's, we, we read about the curses that happen with the two prophets, but there's also a message that you hear not much about. And the message of the two prophets is telling them to get ready and it will instruct them where to go. Third verse again, And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. My, that is a mighty cry. It's going to be heard. And somebody's going to get something out of it. It's not just saying, hey, it's a message. And there's seven men. Call thunders. uttered their voices. They spoke with authority. Why does it talk about the John, why does it talk about him whenever he eats the little book or the scroll? There are two messages in his mouth whenever he takes this. One of them is sweet as honey. And the other makes his belly bitter. The sweetness has to be for the bride of Christ. And the bitter has got to be for this wicked world. I don't know who these thunders are. But God is going to give them authority to where that they're going to speak to kings. Now I'll say this. It's going to take the scene of the television. I'm not talking about Trinity broadcast. They won't never see it. They'll still be sitting there saying that they're going to broadcast the coming of the Lord because they got a channel in Israel and got it trained on the Mount of Olives. So they can witness His coming. Let them go ahead. I want to be gone. That's 
be blown to smithereens. Man is so silly in what he's thinking that is going to happen. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to ride, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. John heard the message. But he was told, write them not. It was a race from his mind. God knew something that important that man couldn't keep quiet about. Jesus healed a man of leprosy and told him, don't tell anyone. He healed him and he told everyone. If you want to keep anything quiet, keep it to yourself. Especially anything this exciting. This had to excite John because he is seeing the end of this thing. He's sitting, as the old saying goes, he's sitting on the balcony of heaven looking over the situation. That's a figure of speech. God's give him a bird's eye view of everything. And he said, as he spoke to Daniel, these things will not be understood till the end. What Daniel did not understand then, we understand now. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that are therein, therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer, no longer delay. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound. When did he begin to sound? In 1963. That's when the message started. The seals being opened. The mystery of God should be finished as He declared unto His servants the angels. That is concerning the Gentiles. Nineteen and sixty-three, the message was rejected by the denominational world.
Look where they went from there. Look at all these great tent ministries and everything. They went from there to television to their dancing and stuff. If you turn to television today, they're dancing like everything. Long hair look like something come out of prehistoric world. And I got to believe their daddy did. Cain. The serpent. The serpent. I remember Brother Branham saying, there is, the, said the scientists are looking for the link. And he said the serpent is the link that goes to the prehistoric man. The link. And his offspring live today. There's something here that keeps echo and echo and an echo one. And that is the voice. And the voice. Even mentions it in the seventh verse. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Which would have been that voice still goes. Because that eagle still flies. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. That's what I was talking about a while ago. They gotta be Two different reactions to John. Because of the sweetness and because of the bitterness. We read that in Ezekiel last week. How that whenever he eat, it made his belly bitter, but he was talking about all the things that were going on, the happenings and all, the violence. There's got to be a sweetness to that message because... You're preparing to leave, and this is in that half an hour of silence. 
This all takes place in that half hour of silence. Because when the half hour of silence in heaven, when it is gone, then the bride is gone. Well, I thought when that seal was open, we would be gone to heaven. But then what are you going to do with the voices of the thunders? That half hour of silence in heaven got to be a space of time on earth. And brother or sister, there's no devil going to stand before a saint of God and accuse them in that time. The church of the living God has never had the authority that she will have then, Brother Adams. Never. What about the book of Acts? Brother and sister, this is the finishing up of the book of Acts. Before you're able to call, He'll know your needs. There's your revival. There's where your sickness leaves. There's where the devils are cast out. Who can stand before the God of heaven? Who can stand before the bride of Christ whenever she has her little vial of oil? That's where Brother Jackson said, You may not feel anything now, but you will. Them old doubts and fears and things that creep upon people now, God is the great forgiver. I read on the day of Pentecost how that whenever Peter preached his message, they were cut to their hearts. Men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I believe that that Holy Ghost fell that day. I'm saying to you now, do what you can now to get your heart right with God. Young people, that's all you need. Some kind of peel or some kind of something won't satisfy you. Only thing that will do it is the Holy Ghost. He said, repent and be baptized. And ye shall. That is positive. I 
I'm looking for an outpouring. I'm looking for a revival. But it's not going to be a revival like we've seen before. It's going to be a finishing touch. I'm not disputing anything that has been said. But I'm saying, if we believe it's coming to us, we are that generation, the last generation that will be upon this earth before the coming of the Lord. How John must have felt. He said, And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Just give me a little little honey with the honeycomb. Whatever I don't get out of the honey, I'll chew it. <laughs> I'll chew on that honeycomb. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. It's got to be televised. And it will be free time. There will be nobody begging for television time. God will put it in their heart to want it. To hear it. Even though they disagree. Some of these, I shouldn't say the word, but some of these snotty politicians sit up there in Washington so high and mighty, they're going to come down. God will say, come down off ye throne. By a little ministry uneducated. Paul explains it in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Paul was educated, but he didn't speak education. He, speak, he spoke the Spirit of God. Not to the wise, not to the prudent, 
not to that big preacher that's got his all of his degrees. L L and D D. Dead dog. Get up. Get up on Sunday morning. Open their cafeterias. People go in there and get their meal. They come up and come out and they listen to this beat and bang and stuff. I can't stand it. Don't ever think it will be in faith assembly. I want something that makes a melody. Something that I can understand. I think I'm losing part of my hearing, but I can hear better than that. But the thing about it is, you can't even understand what they're saying. Long hair. All the thing you're doing is making sure the devil accepts them. Oh my. Sick. This is a sick generation. They get out the vote and they pay for the voters and 40% of the people don't even know who the president is. We have a lost generation of people. These old codgers get up there and when they had the principles at one time, they get up there and they make laws, change the Constitution, take your money to support an insurance plan that will never work. Wait till you have to go to pay the bill. <clears throat> Taking it away from senior citizens in order to give it to people that never work. And illegals that have come in. You shouldn't say that. I said it. Amen. You can't hardly find an American doctor anymore. And if you understand three words out of a dozen, you're doing pretty good. You shouldn't say that. You're speaking against our government. That is not our government. God ever should raise up Lincoln and Washington and 
and John Adams and Jefferson and, and those people, they would take something and run them out of there. But he's going to take a little, little bride message that's going to put, put them to shame. And what is the bride going to say? Come now, Lord Jesus. Even so, come now. I don't know how much longer I'll be able to say this, but they are sporting these sporting men that are gay. Gay marriage. That used to be a beautiful word. People even named their daughters gay. I knew some of them. But now then, they made it a dirty word. Something that the devil handles. And you've got a government that supports it. You said and say these things. I said it. And I mean it this morning. Don't put a, a pity party on me for not taking up for this stuff. I won't do it. I'll sit down before I'll do it. But the voice will go out. And one of these days, you men that have changed the laws of America to make it a dirty place, They legalize marijuana in Colorado and now then you can't even go in some of the places. They're not that friendly. I heard a newsman say that, that one place, he said, I can't go because it's too dangerous. So he went to a little more mellow place and 10 out of 12 didn't even know who the president was. Don't tell me there's no harm in marijuana. It leads you on to be a dope addict that you'll never, that you fry your brain and there won't never anything come out of it. Just turn out to be as limp as an old French fry. That has lost its zip. They put men on television on these newscasts with a wonderful suit on 
put women on there this down to here and up to here. And they say there's no difference. I look at you sisters, I see a difference. I look at you brothers, I I know there's a difference. Brother Dwayne, it used to not be that way. I used to walking up up down the street when I was a boy in Liberty, Kentucky. If you if you were a man and you come into town and you didn't have a shirt on, they'd arrest you. Old men chewed tobacco and they spit out in the street. But they knew how to live. I'm not taking up for chewing tobacco, but the, those people, they did have respect. If a woman come down the street, they'd say, be careful what you say to somebody else. Now then the women talk as bad as the men do. Now I remember... If you said something in front of a, a, a real woman, then her face got red that she shouldn't say. Now then, the women are promoting it. Because they got these women senators in Congress like Hillary Clinton. I can't even stomach to look at the woman. Lie like devils. You won't listen to me now, but one of these days you'll listen to somebody. You'll hold your head down too when you do. We live in a time, this was the time of when the, the, they started out commemorating soldiers that had given their lives. We commemorated Thanksgiving with with thanks for another harvest, just like they did on Plymouth Rock. But now Memorial Day is just a a day to barbecue, and I don't have anything against that without even thinking of what really it started out to be and in Thanksgiving, just Turkey Day.
but it cost somebody their lives to cause this to be a holiday. And a lot of men, it cost them their lives. And I knew, I knew men that were in World War II that give their lives. In the Korean War. In the Vietnam War. I worked with a man, Ford Motor Company, that was was in the Vietnam War. And he said, he had a buddy. He said, you had to have a buddy. He said, you sat there in those jungles and fight back to back. And he said, you forget what your mother and, and your sister and your dad look like. And they come back just to be spit on by a bunch of draft dog, dodgers that they made president out of. Heavenly Father, I thank You for this day. I thank You for Your grace and love. I thank You for the day that You've given us, Lord, to worship and to serve You in. Bless Your people, Father. Teach us to wait upon You. We bless Thy holy name. And you, we thank You for Your Word. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May the Lord bless you now. Thank you, Brother Allen, for that. Appreciate the word of the Lord. As he was talking about television, there's too much worth watching on television. It's filth. I know the Pilgrim Holiness don't watch TV because they don't believe it's right, but. Uh, I don't watch TV much anymore because it's just pure filth. So let us all stand. If you have a need for prayer and you'd like to come, then feel free as Brother Chris comes and leads us in song. Some call it heaven, but I call it home. Some call it dreaming, oh, just let me dream on. Some call it paradise Somewhere beyond the sky Some call it heaven But I call it Some 
sisters that are standing in need and pray for their service tonight and come back with expectation. Brother Turner, would you dismiss him? Assess prayer. <laughs>